What's up guys? Today on Robbie's Reviews, I am reviewing the 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Widebody. Now I just want to thank my friend Doug, who's lent me his beast for a few days to uh, check it out, see how it drives, and how it compares to the non-Red Eye, and of course the Demon that I've actually driven before. And um, we're going to get out on the road and uh, see how it drives. Let's go check it out. Alright guys, here she is, the 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Widebody. This example is finished in Plum Crazy Purple, or PCP. It's actually a 70s color they brought back for 2015 when the Hellcat was first introduced. Now this being the Red Eye model, it actually shares the engine with the Dodge Demon. So it's the 6.2 liter supercharged Tammy V8. Has the same camshaft, same 2.7 liter twin screw blower, as opposed to the regular 2.3 liter blower on the Hellcat. And whereas this car makes 797 horsepower and 707 pound-feet of torque, the Demon actually makes 808 horsepower, and I believe the same amount of torque, but that's really due to it having these double nostrils here, as opposed to the Demon, which has the full nostril going all the way across, so that amount of air that's being blocked is actually killing off some of the horsepower. So the Hellcat that was introduced in 2015 makes 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. This car actually makes a staggering 100 more horsepower and it makes just as much torque as uh, the old one makes horsepower. And being the wide body variant here, you can see those wide fender flares that are extending from the fenders as well as those 305 tires all around with the large six piston Brembo calipers up front and you have the four piston in back with slotted rotors all around. Stopping power is really, really nice on this car, especially being over 4,500 pounds. And being the red eye, you get little things around the car that signify how special it is. So you have this little red eye in the Hellcat badge here. On the key fob, which I'll pull out right now, you actually have a little red eye on the key, as well as on the actual supercharger of the car, and a plaque that's on the passenger side of the dashboard inside. So this car actually has the satin black package, which includes a full satin black hood, roof, and trunk. She goes all the way down. That is a lot of satin black paint, but it really, really changes the look of this car, really breaks it up. Around back, you have the optional red eye spoiler. It's more of a ducktail. It actually goes off here and squares off against the back of the bumper here. It has the integrated reverse camera there. And as far as the back of the Hellcat goes, you really can't tell difference from a six cylinder, to be honest. And actually this time for the red eye, there's not even a Hellcat badge on the back. So you really can't tell what you're looking at if you're behind it. You really just have to know. Well, he does have the Hellcat uh, plate frame there. So I guess that'll be a clue. You get things like the black fuel door, which is pretty much standard on all Hellcats and SRTs now. This car has the technology package, so you get the blind spot monitor there, things like bi xenon HID headlights, which I'll turn on in a little bit for you. We can kind of see in there right now, there's a Hellcat that lights up in there. You got the SRT Hellcat badge here. And being the wide body, Dodge actually had to create special reflectors just for this car so they can extend onto the flares. They weren't able to recycle or reuse the ones that come on the narrow body car as well as the front splitter, which kind of has a little hump here that goes all the way up into the fender flare. Now just looking at this car, it is very, very wide. It's very reminiscent of a 70s muscle car. But having that adaptive SRT suspension, it can more than handle itself on any road course or track. All right, now let's take a look at that 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8. Now as you can see, for some of you that might recognize this blower, this is actually from the Demon. It sits up a lot higher. It's 2.7 liters as opposed to 2.3. It's twin screw. And uh, some of you that might have seen modded Hellcats or modded your own Hellcat will have done the green pulley. The Red Eye and the Demon actually come stock with this special green pulley, allowing for more boost. And this is the stock intake. You can kind of see the little tunnel the hole that goes through for air to get fed into the intake, kind of a ram air feature. 
And as I was talking about before, with the little features that shows that it's a red eye, you have the little red eye here on the Hellcat, on the blower. Supercharged hammy down the side. And uh, as far as cooling, this car has actually adopted several unique features from the Demon. It actually has the SRT power chiller and the after chiller. So when you're racing or whatever you're doing, you can actually turn on the power chiller and it'll reroute the cold AC from the occupants inside the car right to the supercharger. So while you stay hot inside and uncomfortable, the car is actually cooling down and is ready, you know, ready for more performance. And the after chiller actually works similar to a lot of what European cars have. So you can turn on the after chiller, you shut the hood, turn off the car, it'll actually keep the ignition on and reroute the AC to cool the supercharger down between runs at the track or if you're just, if you're just getting home after driving hard and you want to cool down the car quickly. So it's nice having that option. As you can see, my friend Doug here already has a billet technology catch can with the Z bracket here. And as far as packaging goes, it's very similar to other Hellcats and SRT Challengers. It's just this large engine and it's crammed in here. It's an already huge engine bay, but with all the cooling and extra things this car needs to run properly, it's a very, it's a very snug fit. And especially with that supercharger that's sticking all the way up, almost out of the hood. They had to create a special cutout just for the supercharger up here. And Earlier I showed you the two nostrils in the hood. I don't want to say that only one of them is functional, but here you can see the SRT Hellcat logo and uh, the cutout or the feed for the air. It looks like they only made, they made both functional, but they both feed into one area that goes directly over the intake. That's probably to prevent dirty or turbulent air from going to the other side. It's a nice little feature. Actually, when I was talking about how this intake is fed by both and goes directly into the uh, air filter here, you actually have the ram air on the driver's side headlight goes directly into the intake but on this side while it is open it's actually capped off at the end so you don't have that dirty or turbulent air going inside the engine bay very very cool and you have basic things like the washer fluid here battery coolant lots of coolant tanks overflow tank lots and lots of pulleys see the supercharger here you see that 6.2 liter Hemi block down there. Very, very large engine. Sits way back into the firewall. But actually Dodge has managed to have most of the engine sitting on or behind the front axle. So that's why the understeer is really not that bad in this car. It corners very well. Unlike say an Audi where the engine sits over the front axle and they understeer like crazy. All right, now let's close it up. Let's check out the trunk. And it is no surprise, just like other Challenger models, the trunk is massive. And while there are fold down seats, you really don't need them. Plenty of room back here, and there's actually a false bottom floor here for more of like a spare tire and tools and what have you. So you've got that camera integrated. The Dodge lettering there. No Hellcat badge in the back, so really no way to know what it is unless you know what you're looking at. All right, now that we've got the red eye out of my friend Justin's shop so we don't fill it with exhaust fumes, we're going to step inside now and check out the interior. Start it up. Got the red push to start button here. And as you can see, that red eye logo when the car starts up, followed by red key in use, letting you know that the full power of the car is available. Instead of the 500 horsepower you get with the black key, you have the red key in the car right now, which gives you the full 797 horsepower. And um, looking around, I mean, if you're familiar with the interior of the any Challenger, really, or especially the SRTs, Scat Packs, and Hellcats, uh, you'll feel right at home in this car. It has the SRT flat bottom steering wheel, nice perforated leather on the sides, full leather on the top, and you have this nice cool metallic finish on the bottom. SRT logo in the middle on the horn cover. And you have the nice red gauges here. I like how they're analog. It lets you know, especially when you're doing the manual shifting. Red lines at about, looks like 6,500 RPM. And of course you have that 220 mile an hour speedometer. Very cool. And you have the big TFT display in the middle. It's reconfigurable. You show the speed, speed warning, vehicle info, tire pressure, performance, so you have zero to 60 timers, zero to 100. Eighth mile, quarter mile, braking distance, 
current G-forces. This car has experienced right around 0.9 G's at each corner. You have a lap timer, lap history. Top speed, looks like Doug has done 175 in this car. Let's see what else you got. Fuel economy, right now it's getting about 11.9 average, which is horrible, but that's not the reason you buy a red eye. You can see it's got rated about a quarter tank and the range is 34 miles. No doubt I'm gonna have to put some gas in this car for Doug, but like I said, it's miles per gallon, not miles per gallon. Your trip info, audio as the Harman Kardon system, which sounds very, very good. And back to the digital speedo there. You can change it from miles an hour to kilometers an hour. And you guys can probably hear that fan. The radiator fan is extremely loud to help keep that 2.7 liter blower cool. Moving down here to the center stack, you have that classic cool like machine finish that Dodge loves doing. You have the electronic shifter with the uh, leather stitched shift boot. You have all your AC controls, SRT button, which you press here. Takes you to your shortcut, so you have track, which puts power to 797, transmission track, power shifters on, track, track, track for traction, suspension, steering. You have sport, which turns m most of it into uh, sport mode. Keeps the power at 797, paddle shifters on. And you have Doug's custom mode, which is track transmission, full power, paddle shifters on, street traction, and uh, street steering. And then you have your auto, which is what, depending on the situation, the car will just put it into. So if you put it into drive here, the car felt the need to uh, leave everything the same. And it actually shows you that your red key is in use. So it says the red key is currently in use, enabling access to the maximum engine power level. To disable access to the maximum engine power level, please use the black key. Now, as I've driven many Hellcats and actually a Demon, and I have never used the black key. Don't ever intend to. That's, I mean, that's, you get right about the power level of a regular SRT with a 392, and this is not fun. We'll put it back into uh, Sport. Make sure we'll do, yeah, we'll do auto. And moving down here, you have two full size cup holders, as well as a little cubby here for storage. Nicely sized center console. Huge glove box. Plenty of storage on the doors here. You have more side pockets down here. You have all your window controls, headlight controls, trunk popper. The AC works great in this car. However, we actually have things like the SRT power chiller. So if we go into track mode here, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it on the pick it up on the camera. The fan just got a lot louder. You can actually hear the air conditioning of the cold AC being rerouted from me in the car on this hot day to the supercharger so it stays nice and cool. You can actually feel the air getting pulled away. So there's air coming out, but it's very warm air. And uh, superchargers get nice and cool thanks to that cold AC coming out. We're definitely gonna put it back into sport mode because it is getting warm in here. Actually, if we go to race options, you have your launch control and you have your RPM. You can adjust, put it to anything, activate launch control your shift light which is programmable and something pretty cool called race cool down so right now it shows your intercooler coolant temp and it's like a live graph and everything ambient temp target temp and it says all conditions must be met before feature will activate so hoods closed batteries good system status good cooling required um, you can activate quick cool down here and it's actually taking the air conditioning away right now to uh, let me see actually if we turn the car off So right now, all the parameters have been met. And if you guys can hear that. So right now, the uh, intercooler is being cooled down by the AC. And on a hot day like this, if, you, if you've been beating on the car, that feature really comes in handy. So now we're going to start the car back up. Of course you have your 
air conditioned seats, which is a must have, heated steering wheel, your mirror dimmer, uh, things like Sirius XM radio, you have the, actually, you have the uh, ability to pause and rewind the uh, Sirius, which is pretty cool, SRT mode again, which takes you back here, your apps, assist, Apple CarPlay, Wi-Fi hotspot, all types of things. Feed steering wheel there, app manager, seat controls, navigation, map it looks very, very good. Pinch to zoom, very high quality. Going back to the performance pages, it takes a second to load up. This is different from the SRT mode. This actually shows you all the parameters and gauges and statistics about the car. So right now it shows the horsepower, the boost pressure, G-force intake air temp, so if we give it a little gas here. Give your timers, gauges here, trans temp, boost pressure, air fuel ratio, intercooler coolant temp. You can actually click the arrow there to go show a live graph since the car started up. G-force, engine, your dyno mode shows power, torque, which gear you're in. So right now if we put it in drive, so it shows the gear, history in seconds, RPMs and all that. Pretty cool. Go back to home. And uh, it's just really, really nice interior. These seats are huge, very heavy bol bolstering, but they're very comfortable. It has the full map of leather. You have the perforation for the ventilated and heated seats. You have this cool design here. You have the contrast stitching. You have the SRT logo with the Hellcat symbol. The red seat belts. Pretty, actually, I think it's the largest back seat in its class compared to the Mustang and Camaro and other two other uh, two door cars. Very, very big back seat. Large trunk. Plenty of headroom. Um, like I said, the blind spot monitoring. Great visibility. The A pillars and the B pillars aren't that bad. The C pillars are massive, but you really get used to them after a while. You have the SRT logo with the uh, red eye Hellcat here, and if you guys can see that. Just a really, really comfortable place. It's almost like you're driving a lazy boy with 800 horsepower. And of course, you have the uh, two little power domes. Well, I shouldn't say little, they're huge actually, over the uh, satin black hood. The two nostrils there over the hood, they're feeding that 2.7 liter supercharger. And it's just, it's honestly just an easy car to drive. Well, to most people, it might intimidate them being 797 horsepower. It's really easy to control. And really, if you've driven any kind of fast rear-wheel drive car before, this car will come second nature to you. So, you have the nice SRT pedals down there. All right, so now we're going to go get some startup and rev clips of the Red Eye, and then take it out on the road and see what it's like to drive. driving the 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body. We've got it in uh, auto mode right now, which has most of the settings in uh, street. So actually, if we go to SRT mode, it has a pow full power at 797 horsepower. Transmissions in street. Uh, paddle shifters are on traction street. Suspension is sport. Steering is street. It's nice and light, comfortable. Street is basically the comfort mode. Just in a little uh, business park here. Taking out some fun roads real quick. Now right now, when cruising, the uh, wide body Hellcat or Red Eye feels very similar to the Demon that I drove a couple years ago. Steering is nice and light, suspension is very soft because at the end of the day, it is pretty much a drag car. However, the Red Eye has adopted all the right things from the Demon and is basically 
you could say it's a roll racing or a street racing demon in that sense. It's not really set up for just drag racing or dig racing. Uh, the gear ratio is different. Makes a little bit less horsepower and that's actually, believe it or not, only because of the different nostril in the hood. Instead of the one large opening like the Demon has, it has the two nostrils. And instead of 808 horsepower, you get 797. So, not a big deal. But it has adopted things like the SRT power chiller, the after chiller, um, the wide body, the 305 tires all around, obviously. The uh, engine is from the Demon, the 6.2 liter supercharged Tammy V8 has the same camshafts and blower as the Demon is a 2.7 liter twin screw supercharger and uh, it takes in a massive amount of air and when you get on it in this car the wind you get from the supercharger is intoxicating and I'll show you guys that in a little bit so right now we're gonna take it out on the road a little bit do a quick pull we're definitely gonna have to get it some gas and it's funny it shows just under a quarter tank of gas yet the range is 21 miles that is pretty hilarious So we're going to do a little pull. Now the Pirelli P0 is on this car really not the best. They're the tires that the car came with. However, they're very soft, they don't grip well at all, even though they are 305s, they might as well be 205s. The car completely blows the tires off every time, tails all over the place, it's really hilarious. But nonetheless, it is a joy to drive, uh, it's very easy to get a hold of if it starts to get away from you, easy to control. Yes, it is just under 800 horsepower, but it's very playful, the car is not going to let you kill yourself. If you don't turn off traction control all the way, it's really not that bad. It sometimes can be a handful if you're really, really pushing it. And this being a very heavy car, I think it's just over 4,500 pounds. Uh, it doesn't try to disguise its weight in any way. Uh, while you really do have to use weight transfer when throwing it into corners, um, the car can get away from you. So you do have to be mindful that it's a very heavy car and see if we punch it here. driven cars where once you hit the limit you can actually they'll just they'll just let it go like you either end up in a tree or a ditch but with this car it uh it's definitely a bit more easy to handle even though it makes a lot more power than most cars on the road when i say most i mean probably 95 percent of all cars on the road maybe this makes more power than with the exception of bugattis and you know hypercars electric supercars and what have you but when you're driving in normal, in street mode, it just drives like a, you know, a big comfortable Dodge. And you of course feel how wide the car is compared to the narrow body Hellcat. There's actually a narrow body red eye Hellcat, which I would not recommend because one, the tires are a lot skinnier, just doesn't have the same presence on the road. This being a wide body, everybody looks at it. Nobody knows what it is. The people that kind of know what it is, they think it's a demon. And when they hear the sound, they automatically know it's a Hellcat or at least something powered by a Hellcat engine whether it's the regular Hellcat, the Red Eye, or the Demon. However, I think the Red Eye strikes a perfect balance between the base model Hellcat, if you can call it that, and the Demon. It has all the track and street driving functionality that the Hellcat has, and all the cool features, the technology for drag racing, and uh, cooling functions that the Demon has. So it's really just the perfect mix, I guess you, I guess you can call it Frankenstein, of all these special features and technology that Dodge has developed and one package you know it all it, it's everything works towards the same goal keeping the car cool but allowing it to use maximum power all the time and uh, not skipping a beat along the way let's do one more pull here so it has no problem uh, accelerating i mean it's faster than most things i've driven However, with those tires, it's just spins, it'll leave 11s all day, but at the same time, it's able to get enough grip to keep its uh, keep itself straight in line. But it's just a blast to drive. The steering is nice and light. You can throw it around and be confident it's not, you're not going to put it into a wall. Um, Dodge just did a great job. I mean, first time I drove a Hellcat, I had a blast. It's a little bit scary at the same time, especially the first time driving it. It's a 700 plus horsepower monster, supercharged, which when you hear that 
maniacal scream from the supercharger, which no other car sounds like. I don't care what you've driven, nothing sounds like this this car, especially with the bigger 2.7 liter demon blower. Um, it's really just makes you feel like a little kid when you're driving it. Yes, it's not the it's not the best quality in the interior. It's not like a Porsche or Mercedes or Ferrari. Uh, it's not the most sophisticated as far as technology goes. It's not the lightest car at all, but. It is the only car that makes me feel like a little kid, and I cannot get the smile off my face when I'm driving it. All right, guys, well, that should do it for this review of the 2019 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Widebody. Once again, I just want to thank my friend Doug for allowing me to review his car and borrow it for a couple days and see what it's like. See you next time, guys.